Peace, everybody. This is Mark Lamont Hill. You're watching Global Grind. Make sure you check it out every single day. Hey, what's up, world? It's your girl, Brittany. And today, I'm here with somebody that I really admire. And I've been following you for a long time. Mr. Mark Lamont Hill, how are you? I am good. I'm, I'm good to be here. I'm so glad that you're here. And especially with everything that's going on right now in the United States of America, it's like you're the perfect person to speak to about. I'm happy to talk to you. And I've been watching you on CNN as your blood pressure rises and people <laughs> say the dumbest fucking shit out of their mouth as truth and fact, and they are lies. And I just don't understand how do you do it every day. You know, it's, it's a discipline thing. It's pressure. And um, my goal, I think my job is to be like a public defender. Also, right? <laughs> exactly. And I feel like I compromise my position if I, you know, just wild out one day. <laughs> you know, if I deal with the issue calmly, mm -hmm. give statistics, make a persuasive argument, I feel like that's better than giving somebody these hands one time and then I ain't got a job. Mm -hmm. There are many people who intuitively actually believe that we are naturally, naturally less moral, naturally less ethical, naturally more uh, hypersexual, naturally less intelligent. I mean, these are things that people think about black folk, about women. We've gone down the list. And so we have to challenge all those ideas. And that's, that's part of my job. And it's funny because my aunt, who's a white woman, uh, texted my whole family. She comes to the, she comes to the family. Yes, yes. Aunt Jess is so down. We does, love her. Does she make the potato salad though? No, we don't let her make okay. any okay. food, but okay. that's, that's me here nor there. Okay. <laughs> that's but when we need to catch a cab, Aunt Jess is out front. That's what I'm talking about. That's, that's teamwork. That's yes, teamwork. That's how we make this family work. Right. Um, but she texted me just asking us like, She's having a conversation with her white friends and she's obviously like trying to educate them on issues that they don't understand, but kind of being a white ally. She's like, hey, I just want to know like, what do you as black women or black people in general like to be called mm. or referred to, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. And so it's like kind of weird having this conversation with people who are afraid to just even say the word black. Right. Right? So it's like, how are you explaining these issues that black people are facing with people who are apprehensive and scared to identify you as a certain human being or like just don't even want to have the conversation because it makes them uncomfortable. Right. Race is like the third rail in America. People don't want to talk about it. People almost would rather talk about religion at right. this point than <laughs> race, you know? It's like people don't want to talk about it. They don't want to acknowledge it. They feel like if we can pretend that race doesn't exist mm -hmm. and that color doesn't exist, then that's a better world, right? That's why people say I want to be colorblind. Right. right? I don't want to see color. And my thing is, that's not the world I want to live in. I don't want to be post-racial, right? I want to be post-racist. Right. I want to live in a world where people don't use my race as a marker of my humanity and where my race doesn't become a social demerit. But I don't want to live in a world where you don't see I'm black. Because mm -hmm. if you got to destroy my blackness in order to see me as a human being, then we're still not in the right place. Right. You know, as an intellectual and as an academic, a lot of times people think that all I do is read books, and I read a lot of books. <laughs> and I do a lot of heavy lifting, you know, intellectually when I can, mm -hmm. and I organize as an activist. But I also like to have fun. I like to laugh. I like to watch reality TV. I mean, one of the reasons why I'm doing VH1 Live is because I actually enjoy... Reality TV. Reality TV, but also pop culture. Yeah. The show is pop culture. Yeah. The show is entertainment. The show is celebrity stuff. We're going to find engaged VH1 talent and people outside of VH1. Mm -hmm. It's gonna be a talk show. Yeah. It's gonna be a talk show done well, done right, and with my sensibilities. It doesn't mean that I leave my brains at the door. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean that I don't ask tough questions. It doesn't mean that I don't have a critical analysis, but I do it in the spirit of fun. Because after being on all day being told the black folk are prone to criminality, and after having to cover you know, crises in Syria and other places, I wanna to relax too, I wanna to laugh too. I wanna to see what Jocelyn and Stevie J is up to. Right. I wanna know what's going on with Cardi B. I wanna see what Shawnee, you know what I mean, is, is doing with, with Basketball Wives of, of LA. I wanna know what's going on with Black Ink Crew. I wanna see all that. Right. So is reality TV like your biggest guilty pleasure or do you have others? <laughs> um, I don't feel guilty about watching reality TV, so I have no shame. <laughs> So I can't even call it a guilty pleasure. He's like, I have no shame whatsoever. Exactly. I think I think I think trap music is my 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 biggest guilty pleasure. Okay. Uh, reality TV, I'm, I've come to terms with. It's just who I am. All right. So what's like your favorite trap song right now? The last album I bought. So I, I got school. I, I bought Schoolboy's album mm -hmm. yesterday. I love that album. BCW. It, it's, it's dope. YG's album is what I've listened to all month. Okay. That album is crazy. Um, I've been listening to a lot of these singles, you know what I mean? Like like the free joint uh, with, with Drake and Khaled. With, with Drake and, okay. Khaled and, and I wanted it because Gucci's on it. Oh. 
<laughs> you know what I mean? Like I can hear Drake and Khaled all the time. Right. You know what I mean? Um, all the way up remix. I'm 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 waiting for Remy to put out more stuff. So yes. I'm excited about that because uh, Remy is dope. Uh, oh, and been dope. Been dope since for Big Pun. Since Pun's album, Miss Martin, like 15 years ago. So. I just love hip hop and I love engaging that and I love to escape there sometimes. So, you know, if I'm if I'm in a place where that's playing, it makes my whole day better. And if it ain't playing, I'm I've got my headphones on when I'm when I'm working out, when I'm listening, I'm 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 doing that till I'm listening to it. It's, it's my life. So what what was I guess your defining moment or I guess the moment when you went back to Philly when you were like, okay, so maybe I should go back to school. Like this isn't really what I I was wanted. homeless. Okay. I was homeless. Um and I knew I had I knew I knew I needed something different. And so I went back to Philly so I wouldn't be homeless. Yeah. Because I was, I was living on the streets. And, and then um, my mom was like, you got to get a job or you're going to be homeless again. Right. <laughs> so she said, get a job and go to school. Mm -hmm. And so I decided to do both. And that's, so I started selling accidental death and dismemberment insurance again um, and uh, work on this temple full time. Yeah. And so I was working 40 hours a week, 50 hours a week, and I was going to school taking like all these credits, 24 credits, 27. Oh my God. Because that's that's just Because I felt out. like I was behind, and I felt yeah. like I need to catch up. And so the rest of my life, even now, I still feel like I'm behind, so I'm always trying to do 15 things. That's why I got like 50 jobs. Young black men don't feel loved sometimes, mm. and I feel like they feel like this intense pressure to be like hyper-masculine and mask all of their emotions, and, and then you're dealing with outside forces like the police and systemic oppression, and then kind of how we perpetuate things in our own culture that make them be held to the certain standard of, of masculinity. What do you think that we can do to make our young black boys feel okay with being who they really are? Yeah, we have to change the whole way we engage masculinity in society. Mm -hmm. You know, when, when you have a baby and it comes out, the baby has a sex, but it doesn't have a gender, right? right. Gender's the social stuff we place on it, mm -hmm. right? When you start painting a room blue and pink, or yellow, if, you know, if you're trying to be safe. Yeah. You know, it, it, it's what happens when you tell your two-year-old to stop crying if he's a boy, mm -hmm. right? You know, when you tell him to man up, right? One, that takes away his childhood. Yeah. Right? Because we, oftentimes we erase the, the, the childhood of black and brown boys and girls. Um, and second, you tell him that part of what it means to be a man is to not have emotions, mm -hmm. to not display emotionality. Um, you take away fantasy and play in a certain kind of way. You know, you grew up with dolls. Mm -hmm. I grew up with action figures. Right. They the same damn thing. <laughs> yeah, they're dolls. <laughs> <laughs> they made on the same factory, same right. plastic, same everything, but I, I can't have a doll, mm -hmm. right? I got to be an action figure, because the only way I can use my imagination to play is if it's in the service of violence, right? I can have an army truck, I can have a soldier. I can't have just somebody chilling, you know what I mean? Right. Um, we have to change that, you know? Um, you have a diary, I have to journal. Right, mm -hmm. you know, because I can't just narrate my day unless I'm in jail, and then I can write letters all day. <laughs> right, right. So there, are the, there are very few spaces for us to do that. Boys don't read fiction at a certain point unless you're in jail. Right. Now, all of a sudden, you, you find people you, you be able to play with emotion and escape because you want to escape, li quite literally. Right. Right. Um, there's this way in which we're told as boys to not have emotion um, when men do have emotion, and the problem is that the only legible emotion we allow men to have is anger. Right. So. I got homies that are, that'll break up with their girlfriends or be mad with their wife, and they'll come in the crib and they'll be kicking my door and punching walls. And, he's like, and I'll be like, hey, what's wrong? And the homie will be like, yo, she's so emotional. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> you're emotional. Right, but to us, anger is, is, the, is, is, is permissible. Right. And it's not, we don't mark that as emotion, but to cry and say, I feel vulnerable, or I feel sad, or I miss you, or I feel insecure, or I love you, these are things that we're not allowed to do. Boys are discouraged from writing poetry, you know? Um, there's so many parts of ourselves that don't get nurtured, that don't get healed, that don't get made whole, and they get constantly torn apart. Mm -hmm. And so all of that restricts who and what we can be. Yeah. If you're told you have to be hypersexual, you have to be heterosexual, you have to, you know, you have to be violent to be a man, then what happens to queer youth? What happens to trans youth? What happens to, what happens to youth who you know, um, don't want those things? Mm -hmm. And by those things, I mean being hypersexual and being right. violent. What does it all mean? You know, we gotta change the whole story. And that comes from the music we consume, to the TV shows we watch, to the theology we engage in, in our churches, synagogues, and masjids. It, it, it affects all of it. We gotta, we, gotta, we, gotta, we gotta live different if we wanna be different. You get rendered as nobody. You become a casualty of America's War on the Vulnerable from Ferguson <laughs> to Flint. And 
beyond. And then you got to go home and be upset about and it. Upset. But then cheer up by watching VH1 Live at 10 p.m. on Sundays, only on VH1. God, Mark, you're so you're so good at this. Like what? Professional in true form. I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> I'm just talking. This is how I talk all the time. Listen, thank you for coming to Chit Chat. I wish we had more time because I could like pick your brain more. Can I come back? Yes. You promise? Kelly. You're totally just tearing down fourth walls here. I know. I, I like to do that sometimes.